Legends and Training is an adult D&D podcast. Please see content warnings and more in the description. Last time on Legends and Training. You're looking at a few Chimera Slayers here. That's what you're seeing. And this bard, he starts a tale of this monstrous, mysterious beast that has ravaged the town of Keyshire. Is that where we're from? Yeah, that that's it. There's no neandering. It's horses, cart, supplies on the road. As you reach your third night of rest, I need the four of you to make a constitution saving throw at disadvantage. Val, my good friend. The four of you have basically been chloroformed. He takes you to this massive caged area. So I've got bad news for everyone. Yeah, we've been kidnapped. My name is Kelsey, and I... And the leader of the Founding Forge. This beast that has ravished your town, it belongs to me. What is the quickest way for me to get out of here and to Keyshire? That's a great question. Now let's bring out Kraken Clog! As the ground opens up, but it opens a lot bigger. And this platform raises slowly. And then you hear the crowd start chanting, Crack! Clog! Crack! Clog! Crack! Clog! And it gets louder, and then you hear the banging of massive weapons against, like, shields and stuff, or against their armor, or whatever it is. It's loud clanging. As they begin to rise, you see a frost giant and a fire giant. Battle scarred, they got a little wear and tear on them. They got some fresh cuts, they got some fresh wounds. But they look like they're ready for another round. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Legends in Training, where we're kicking off Episode 2 of the Chronicles of Mavala. I'm your DM, Dakota. Hey, I'm Zach. I'm playing Mr. Pocket Stool. He's not happy. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm playing Gladiolis. Um, we're live, laugh, loving right now, as best as we can. Hey, I'm Tyler. I'm back playing as Ned. Nedrick. Ned? He, he's a fairy druid. He's a little guy on Gladio's shoulder. Don't acknowledge it. Next. <laughs> Sold. Cut the commercial. Cut the commercial. <laughs> Fuck, I thought you were going to redo yours. Nope. Um, oh, should I? <laughs> I, I no, no, I just. Uh, it's too late now. Go. Hi, I'm Phoenix. I'm playing Daphne. Um, she might not be Doug, but she's doing her best. And this is Madison, and I'm playing Val Satra, my little furball bard. I don't know why my brain wanted to say rogue. I'm not playing a rogue, but that's okay. And where we went off to battle arena. <laughs> All right. Where we left off last time, we were just entering the battle coliseum. The crowd is going crazy. The fire and uh, frost giant have just entered the ring, cracking cog. Uh, we have gone ahead and rolled initiative. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to read off the initiative list just so that way everyone kind of knows who they're after or who they're before, etc. It's the same thing, who they're after or who they're before. Or just the order we go in, you know, like <laughs> the order that you go in. Who they're after, who they're before. <laughs> just to paint the scene a little bit, this is a massive arena and... It is circular. Uh, in the center, there are three rows of four pillars each row. So it's a three by four pillar square. Some of the pillars on the inside have been knocked over at various heights. Whether you use those to your advantage or not is up to you. Some of the pillars towards the outer part of the center of the ring uh, are still standing. You can tell that a lot of the destruction and mayhem is where it's obviously happened. Starting off at the top of initiative would be Val, followed by Daphne, followed by Gladiolus, followed by Mr. Pockets. Oh. Then comes the fire giant Cog, then Ned, then the frost giant Crack. Fantastic. Crack. Crack. Smoking on that Crack pack tonight. <laughs> now, where the parties are placed, there's you. You guys are about where where the three by four pillar section is. You guys are probably about 20, 30 feet outside of that pillar section, and the frost and fire giant on the other side, cracking cog. They're also about 30 or 40 feet away from the pillar section, and 
as you're all just taking this in, the the, the area around you, the crowd, the uh, your, your opponents, you hear this loud reverberating horn sound. That means it's time to fight. That initiates the start of the battle. Fantastic. Can I tell which giant looks more fucked up? Uh, you know what? Go ahead and give me a perception or investigation. Mmm, it doesn't matter either way at all, because that's just going to be a flat roll. Flap. Oh, a ten. Ten? They're both covered in cuts and bruises. It's it's hard to tell who looks worse than the other, mm-hmm. um, especially when they're roughly 100, 100 plus feet away and standing at around 20-ish feet each. It's, it's rough to tell. Cool, cool, cool. So I can move the entirety of my movement speed, right? Yeah, to get absolutely. closer? Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to go forward 30 feet, and then I'm going to cast Sleep at second level on the Fire Giant. All right. What do I need to roll? Nothing. I get to roll uh, seven D- uh, D8s. Okay. It's not looking good so far. I'm not going to lie. It's 32 hit points. 32. Does he good. take any damage of no. that 32? So the way it works is creatures within... Um, oh, so it could have been both of them. It is both of them. Um, 20 Creatures within 20 feet of a point I choose within range are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. Starting with the creature that has the lowest current hit points, each creature affected by this spell falls unconscious. Um, essentially, like, it's a meets it beats it, right? So it's equal to or less than what I just rolled in hit points. Okay, yeah. So, what you rolled what did not meet half their HP. Alright, then I've got nothing. That's it. Alright, so Val has advanced the full 30 feet and is just on the edge of the pillar of section sleep. of the center <laughs> of the arena. We know they're thick now. Next up is Daphne. I want to cast um... <laughs> Can I do that? I avoided getting that spell. (laughs) Fuck you. Daphne, real quick, as you're deciding on what you're going to do next, you hear a little chuckle. Can you help me out? (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be quite interesting. And you start hearing crunching sounds like he's actually in this telepathic connection. He's also eating snacks. What do you have? Oh, it's not about what I have. It's about what you have. You want to give me something? I think I'm going to watch for a little while. I want to see what you're made of. I bet if I was Doug, you'd give me something. Look, Doug is a different story. He needs help. I, on the other hand, have faith in you. Almost like you like Doug better than you like me. But uh, that's okay. I'm not crying about it or anything. (sighs) Whatever. I'll do this by myself. And I'll... It's a bad thing to say to your deity. <laughs> Die, I guess. Good luck. <laughs> he doesn't care about me. He's never cared about me. Um, I'm going to cast Mirror Image. So you just have illusionary versions of yourself around you. Are you planning on moving up any or are you hanging back? Um, how far are we away from him? Um, I'd say you're roughly... There's like a 150 foot gap between you and the Giants right now. Each party is about... 30-ish feet away from the entrance of the pillar, middle section of the arena, except for Val, who ran up to the edge of the pillars. Did you get behind any of the pillars, or are you just standing between them? What you doing? I'm gonna... I'm gonna say that, yeah, I got behind one. Cool. Since that's now an option. Well, they're there. You can use them. They're probably about five, six Mm -hmm. feet thick. Mm -hmm. There's no way for me to, like, kind of push my duplicates, like, to the side or anything. So that's a different spell, which is, I believe, is just called duplicate. Um, Never mind. But mirror image, they just travel with you. Basically, it's hard to tell which one is the real you. There's there's just four Daphne standing in a a little bunch. Yeah, I'll move up 30 feet. So you move up near Val. Next up is Gladiolus. And I do Scorching Ray because it's 120 feet, so I don't have to move and get closer to the things that are going to kill me. Yeah, I mean, you have to move up a little bit so you're within range, but yeah. About a, like I said, y'all are about 150 feet away yeah, from them. I move up just enough. Yeah. Just enough. So you use your full, you use 30 feet, yep. get up, scorching ray. Cool. Do I roll or you roll? I roll. Roll away. 
The 16. 17. 16 plus 8. <laughs> that hits. Do you roll for all three or just one roll, roll for all three? three. I, I, one I separate. To, yeah, I have to roll for all three. First one. 18. Hits. That's an 18 naturally, so that's cool. Hits. Ooh, great, great, great. All three great, hits. Great. Don't you add something? Never mind. Now you get to roll your damage. Fire. Fire. This is insane. Yeah. So, 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 so. 17. 17. <laughs> 17 fire damage. Is that okay? All right. All by yourself. All by yourself. <laughs> you watch as the three scorching rays weave in and out of the, col- the, the, the pillars, and then they strike true to the chest of crack and just want rapid succession. Boom, boom, boom. And you see the smoke kind of billow up, and he just kind of leans forward through the smoke and just grins at you. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> All right, you doing anything else? No, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> On the Mr. Pockets. I do believe you've had your flame tongue yes. drawn this entire flame time. Flame tongue is ignited. I think that I am so far away that I am going to begin to start running. Running, 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 running. Um, I, you said some of these pillars are knocked over. I mm-hmm. think I'm going to try and get some high ground, get up on top, and start running. Yeah, so there's uh, the way that they've fallen over is that the breaking point has landed on top of the part that's still standing, so it creates like a little bit of a ramp. Perfect. So there's one that stands probably about 10 feet tall, and there's another one that probably stands about 15, 16 mm-hmm. feet tall. And then just various heights around there. Hell yeah. I want to like climb up and kind of like jump in between them. I, I have the thief as my multi-class for rogue, so I'm literally like, this is my thing. I'm, I'm getting up on top and I'm jumping across the roofs all. Parkour. Like, like a creepy little monstery long noodly thing. I love that. That's yeah, easy so enough. I mean, with as wide as these pillars are, there's no balance needed for it. And so. I've got really long arms. i got 10 foot reach. So. How high, How tall do you want to be? Oh, I, I myself, I'm only like four feet, but my arms. But are like, which pillar, broken pillar, are you on top? The of? 15 foot one. Okay, so you're yeah. like 15 foot in the I'm air. I'm up high, and, and I'm trying to like walk, run up in a way that I'm like kind of a, in, but in like the pillar is I'm using it as like cover to hide. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a ghost. Oh fuck! I turned into a ghost. Uh, Twenty-nine. Yeah, to the best of your knowledge, you're obscured. All right, you doing anything else? Uh, that's all I can do. Cool. Now we're up to the uh, cog, the fire giant. So he is going to run forward thirty feet, and he's going to enter into the pillars, and then he's going to use his action to dash and move about another twenty feet in. As he's positioned himself towards the uh, more of the corner area, not dead center, but he's kind of in the corner area, like he's flanking. He's moved around the flank a little bit, get a better view of what's going on in between the pillars. And that's going to be his turn. Ned. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is cast jump on myself. Don't you have a fly speed? Yeah, but listen. This is going to be so... And then I'm going to turn into a giant constrictor snake. <laughs> oh! And so that's my action and bonus action. So I, I can't do anything right now. But I've cast jump on myself and I'm a giant constrictor. Snake. Yeah, you still got your movement. I don't want to get close yet. Okay. So everyone just watches this tiny fairy turn into this. What's what's your size again? I'm small. No, but the huge beast turn into this hum- this to the audience it looks like out of thin air kaiju. this <laughs> this huge kaiju like snake just appears out of nowhere and everyone's like oh and just freaking out they've never seen anything like this <laughs> it's just this massive snake so, so we're, we're still like 60 feet away right you're 30 feet from the entrance of the pillar area okay so uh, Ned hops off the shoulders of Gladio after the big scorching ray, and he like his hood comes down, and you see. Oh, so you already moved up thirty feet then, if you're riding on the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're right there at the entrance to the pillars. Mm-hmm. And so I hop off, and from their point of view, from Kraken Clog's point of view, 
You see me hop off behind a pillar, and then from behind it, they just see this giant snake form, and he just, like, has... And he just kind of puts his head around, and he's looking at him. He's like... <laughs> How far did you ju- want to jump? I'm not jumping yet. Oh, okay, you're not jumping <laughs> I want to wait till I can use my action to jump. Because I'm going to do something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just see. I'm just watching the snake coil up. Yeah, no, this massive for 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 again the audience. The massive snake just appeared out of nowhere, and they freak out over it. That's my bestie, Daphne. You hear in your head. You've got some interesting friends there. Why can't you call me interesting? <laughs> I'm about to become the new Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Please All right, don't do it. Next up is Crack. Crack is going to go into a full sprint. <laughs> Hell yeah. And he's like going to move forward uh, 60 feet, which uh, puts him about almost dead center of all the pillars. And uh, does anyone here speak giant? I do. Hand to God, I speak giant. So what you hear oh, is uh, in giant, you just hear, I'll take you on all at once. And then he'll, he'll give a nice big roar. <laughs> Now we're back at the top. So we got Frost Giant in the center, Fire Giant flanking from y'all's periphery. He's flanking to the left. He's not obscuring himself, obviously. So that's about where where they're at. Val, we're back to you. I'm going to go ahead and turn, and I'm going to hit the Fire Giant with um, Shatter. All right. But he needs to make a constitution saving throw. It's a 16. God damn it. I hate it here. Whatever cool. He's 30 feet. He's something whatever, whatever. Yeah, about 40-ish feet away. Can I go ahead and just hop up on one of those inclined pillars that's closest, closer to him and get up in the air too? Sure. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that as well. Yeah, you make your way up one of the inclined pillars. This yeah. one uh, at peak will stand about 10 feet tall if you get all the way to the edge. Perfect. I'll be there. Okay. Daphne. Cool. Any, any <laughs> bonus cool. actions or anything? I don't have any right now. Wait a minute. Yeah. Actually, actually, now that you said that, um, I do have hidden steps, so I am going to go ahead and go invisible. Okay. Um, That's the furball trait, right? Yeah, it is. I am now. I think it's good for like a minute or two? Until the start of my next turn or until I attack next or oh, someone okay. hits me. Or I'm, no, until I'm forced to make a saving roll. And after Daphne is gladiolus, I'll be thinking about your next move. And I cast Spirit Guardians. I like that she's building herself her own army. Must make a wisdom saving throw. So I don't think that I... I think this is the same as... Yeah, no, you just yeah. cast it and it's there. What do your spiritual guardians look like? Um, They're very tall. They're blue. A little spire. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> they're tall with white glowing eyes. No pupils, though. And almost a mystic actually mystic very light bluish aura around them almost like ghost this is, uh, giving me a what is it watchman vibes fun like, fact spirit oh, guardian is a concentration spell for everybody listening we'll just keep up with your concentration if you take damage you have to roll to concentrate on the spell cool any movement I'm a go you ran up to the edge of the pillars so you're just outside of the, the pillar section of the arena. Um, you said that the fire giant was like 30 feet away from us is he like looking? He's he's more like forty-ish feet away from you, yeah. and the he's frost giant's him. dead center, about thirty feet from you. So the your, the fire giant had flanked left a bit, so he's just a smidge further. All right, can I go the opposite direction? But like, I basically want to be out of his out of um, cracks. I guess his name is um, line of sight. So just not moving forward or backward, but moving to like I believe it's oh, the, the right. frost giant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. You 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 start flanking right, and you get behind a pillar, and you're obscured. I create an army. I also hide. <laughs> like, don't mind me. Your aura is sticking out of both sides of the pillar because it is 15 feet radius around you. Mm-hmm. So it's uh all these ghosts are like <laughs> we're over here. <laughs> Come get us. <laughs> so you yourself are obscured, but you got. You're giving off that aura. Gladiolus. Uh, I was going to do Entangle, but uh heard that's Phoenix's favorite. So do instead. It. De- do what you want. I do, do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, instead, could I do uh, just Thorn Whip? Is that okay? It's whatever I'm, I'm you just, want. I'm just checking the Frost Giant because that one's within 30. 
drunk one's in the middle, right? Yes. Yes, because the other one's 45, 50. So. Yes, because okay. you ran up to the edge. Yeah. Perfect. Um, it was a 15. So it's, so it's 23? Yeah. Yeah, that hits. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay, so you see it's a whip, right? Right? <laughs> thorns on it <laughs> right they're like you know like thorns on a rose <laughs> so you prick yourself on yeah like thorns that it's, it's, on a rose. it's absolutely insane i'm sure on no one's whip. <laughs> sure no one's ever seen it before right and it cracks and it's gonna hit the frost giant that's all i got bam we're all seven yeah yeah so those of you who are around you see this uh you, you see the thorn whip just from behind the pillar just whips out and slaps this frost giant across the across the calf just adds one more cut to his multiple cuts he's already wearing he heckles you <laughs> is that all you got yeah that's all I got <laughs> Mr. Pockets I'm gonna keep running across the tops of these pillars it's like Batman but if Batman was an orangutan yeah if you're jumping <laughs> pillar to pillar go ahead and give me a just Athletics or acrobatics? A boosh. 21. 21? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're studying the pillars, you're skipping across the top, skipping and jumping across the top. Skipping and jumping, <laughs> skipping and jumping. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you're you're watching out for all the weak points. Oh, yeah. You're good. What are you I'm doing? Just wait, I'm waiting to, to be in, like, striking range of one of these giants. Yeah, Mr. I mean, Pockets is very upset at the situation he is in and wants to take it out on something. Yeah, I mean, with your movement speed, you could get on a pillar that's right near the frost giant. Hell yeah. I make like Leonidas from 300 and I jump off of the pillar and I raise my flame tongue in the air and I go to stab down the ice one. Yeah, give me an attack roll. Here we go. Advantage because I was hiding. Thank you, God. 19. That hits. Fuck yeah. 18 damage. I plunge my sword into his shoulder and hang there, snarling and snapping and taking little bites out of his skin. Yeah, so you come down and you, your blade strikes true and you dig it into his shoulder. And uh, you got about 10 foot drop. What you going to do? Can I hang there? Yeah, give me a strength check to hold on. He's not just going to let you willingly I do it. Failed. <laughs> I yeah, failed. so <laughs> like like a like a mosquito, he as soon as you stab into his shoulder, he instinctively reaches up and brushes you off and uh, make a deck saving throw. Yeah. Natural twenty. Yeah, like dropping a cat, you land on your feet unscathed. But you are right there standing at the heel of the frost giant. Um, I think that Mr. Pockets begins to start chuckling. If I gotta kill you to see my kids, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, he's just covered in blood. It's starting to mat up his fur a little. Actually, no. Flame Tongue has made a fire, so it probably was just corroding skin immediately. I just smell like the burnt fur. You're still salivating in the middle. Drooling. Drooling profusely. All right. Anything else? That is all I can do. All right. Uh, next is the fire giant, Cog. <laughs> you do that every time. <laughs> you forget every time that they get to hit back. That was me. Bullshit. What the fuck? Why did they get the fight back? I'm just a little guy. Okay. He's going to see your aura sticking out from Don't behind the pillars over there, and he's going to pick up one of the broken pieces of the pillar, and he's going to chuck it at you. There's a 23 hit. Wow. Yes. I'm going to cast Silvery Barbs. All right. As a reaction. Absolutely. Um, so uh, the triggering creature must re-roll the d20 and use the lower roll. Do I also have to re-roll because of my multiply people? No, you're good. Um, mm -hmm. There's a 14 hit now. No. Cool. Roll right. Um, and so then you're within range. So I'm going to go ahead and on your next attack, you have advantage. Yay. So, as you see Cog pick up a chunk of pillar and he throws it at the pillar you're standing behind, it uh, doesn't strike true, but it does hit the pillar that you're standing behind and rubble rains around you, but nothingness. 
Yeah, basically it looks like he had like a little muscle spasm. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he's going to move up and... Let me see if this affects what you're about to do, because I'm pretty sure that just dropped my invisibility. Yeah, that would count as an attack. But I just did, yeah? No, it's a reaction. Okay, cool, then I'm still invisible. Yeah, unless it specifies that it's an attack. I would say it wouldn't count. It does not. Cool. So the fire giant's going to move up next to his counterpart. And uh, let's see. Next is Ned. Okay. Uh, going to go back on what I said earlier. The giant constrictor snake was a challenge rating of two, and I can't do that. So I just, I've just i actually turned into a constrictor snake. <laughs> what size is that? Uh, large beast. Okay. okay. That's still not bad. Still impressive. Okay. I mean, you just turned into like a 20-foot snake. I'm going to slither up to the top of a pillar and just leap all the way to them. Yeah. You have a climb speed? I mean, imagine you do as a snake. I'm a snake. Can I just... Yeah. Okay, yeah. So then I'm going to do that and then jump all the way to him. And I'm going to jump to the ice giant and attempt to constrict. That is an 18 plus 4. Yeah, what, what is, is that? It? Strength contested? Mm-hmm. Melee weapon attack plus 4. Reach 5 feet, one creature. Hit is a 1d8 plus 2 bludgeoning damage, and the target is grappled. And you're, uh, which one are you going for? The ice giant. But it's not it's not a grapple. It's a move called constrict, I guess, is what's the difference. Right. It's essentially grapple, and it's strength contested. So it looks like the snake is just straight. If it lands the hit, the target becomes grappled. Oh, okay. Cool. And then it's an escape DC of 14 if they want to try to escape. Got it. So um, he takes 1d8 plus 2 damage. What was the attack roll? Uh, 22. All right. Yeah, yeah that, you are constricting him. And that is a full 10 damage. To the fire? To the ice giant. Ice. And he is grappled. Um, so technically he is restrained. And I guess, doesn't that mean whoever tries to hit him has advantage? Yeah, that was my goal. I did some bludgeoning damage, and at least for this round, because I'd imagine giants have crazy strength. Whale on them. Attack rolls on this creature have advantage, and uh, the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Boom. And they have disadvantage on the dexterity saving throw. Yes, they do. If he becomes zero, he cannot benefit from any bonus to its speed. There you go. He's a <laughs> so you've essentially, like, wrapped yourself around his neck. He's having trouble. He can't concentrate on what's in front of him. Yeah, so essentially what you guys see is the snake wrap around up to the top of a pillar, and once it peeks its head out, it just flies through the air. Phew. I'm just imagining like a spring. It coils up and just jumps like Tigger's tail. Or, or like the snake from Donkey Kong Country. Just phew. And then as he lands, he starts at the shoulder uh, toward the top of his neck and wraps his arms all the way around into him, and his head is down probably where his peener is. Uh, but looking out towards you guys. Uh, <laughs> nice. All right. All right. Moving on. It is now the Frost Giant's turn. Damn it. He was next in initiative. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to attempt to break the strength or break the grapple. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if it was 13 or 14. 14. 14. That is a 16. Oh, shit. Yeah. 10 plus 6. This Come is cock. useless. I can silvery barbs again. Good. You can do that. Still, you, you don't have your reaction back yet. Oh shit! Plus, like, it's a Try. really, it's a really low save for something yeah. so big. Yeah. Could have done the fire jam. I don't know who's next in initiative. As you're wrapped around his arms, he flexes his arms and pulls you up uh, above his head and tosses you to the ground. With him tossing you to the ground, he is tall. It's like a ten foot drop. But I'm twenty feet long, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> So you take five points of bludgeoning as you're just dropped from about ten feet in the air. Okay. Ha uh-huh. ha. As he drops you to the ground, he just Must chuckles and he says, Val, you hear him say, uh, this can't be it, is it? Brother, this is this what they called us out for? Val knows that Frost Giant's just heckling the shit yeah, out chirping. of Chirping. Full chirping just right now. Chirping. All of y'all is just grogs and grobbles and foreign language you don't understand. Now we're back up at the top. Now we're back up. Okay, so how far away am I? I'm at the top of this 10-foot pillar. Uh, you're probably about 20-ish feet away. 
Can I back up and jump to land on the closest one? Sure. You got the jump distance for it? So it's a 14 times three. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. And I'd say with a height advantage, you probably get an extra five. Yeah, because I'm like there. almost eight foot tall. No, I'm almost, I'm seven foot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm jumping. Which one's closer, the fire or the frost? It does not matter to me. I just want to stab one. Uh, from this point of view, so yeah, fire would be closest. Cool. So then, do, 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 do. yeah, we're going to try to stab it with my rapier. Okay. Is what we're going to do. Uh, 23. Oh, that lands true. I'm a 23. Jordan. Um, I am also going to expend one of my bardic inspiration dice because I know how to do that now. Um, and I'm going to defensive flourish. So it's going to cause the damage, you know, my weapon to cause extra damage. And whatever extra damage I deal also becomes added onto my AC until the end of my next turn. There you go. Uh, so then that is a little D8. And you do have your reaction back now. Perfect. That was shit. That's a great thing. Bardic Inspiration. Okay, so then that is five points of piercing damage. Okay. And I am now at a 21 AC. Did you add your dex mod to the damage? No, I did not. So then that's seven points. There you go. Oh, and I guess I'm also dropping. Or can I attempt to yeah, hold no. on to the rapier? So y'all y'all don't actually don't see Val yet all until something thuds into the fire giant cog. And then all of a sudden Val appears with the rapier run through the fire giant. Classic Val. <laughs> so can I attempt to like... Also, can we all attempt to hang there? I feel like we're all attempting the same thing right now. Yeah, if you're going to attempt to hang, make a strength check. It's a 13 do it. 13 is not going to do it. Ah, so I also fall. Yeah, he's going to swatch in four points as you hit the ground. Can I use my reaction to try and catch? Sure, you're not. You're probably right there next to him. I am. I just fell also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I rolled a 17. I don't know what to add. It beats that 13. That's what I was basing it on. Hey, if you hey, didn't get there in the time that they fell, that's what I was kind of... You're you quicker back. than yes. their fall. Fantastic. And you land in the fluffy arms of uh, Mr. Pockets. A godsend, truly. Absolutely. But he's drooling heavily. Yeah, Val doesn't care. Yeah. I'm, I'm you got some drool on him. I'm convinced at this point that Mr. Pockets is Val's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right. Up next is Daphne. I am going to cast Guiding Bolt. Oh, uh, it's my favorite. At the Frost Giant. Ooh. 25. All right, so 4d6. I have the right dice, yes. 14. 14 damage? Yes. Radiant damage. This was to the Frost Giant? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you watch as your Guiding Bolt strikes the chest of the Frost Giant, and he stumbles a bit and leans up against the pillar behind him. And you can see he's he's a little worse for wear right now. Good. Uh, move, can I move yeah. him from where you're at? Can I move forward thirty feet? Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. gonna put you right in right up in melee range. Uh, Twenty feet. There you go. <laughs> Gladiolus, our Leonin friend. What are you doing? Becoming not a cat. So um, <laughs> so uh, you know how I have the cloak. Hellhound cloak. The cloak specifically made for um, Hellhound Hod. That one? Mm hmm. Yeah. Can I turn into that thing? You want to turn into the Hellhound? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any stipulations, roles, or anything? You it's just turn into it. Yeah. It's not the sixth time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you turn into a Hellhound. How big are you? It's a medium. Okay. Medium. So you maintain relative size. It's just now instead of looking cat like, you are now Hellhound like and on all fours. Yeah. I knew you had that dog in you. <laughs> Everyone's got two wolves in their head. One of them's a cat. <laughs> Stop it! The cat, Stop. Yeah. <laughs> My wolves, no. Stop. <laughs> All right. So was that an action or is that just like a free thing you can do? That's your action? Yeah. All right. You still got bonus action, movement. And I believe you're still on the edge of the pillars, aren't you? You haven't moved in yet. She don't got that kind of dog. <laughs> it's a chihuahua, okay. You hear the announcer go, it looks like it's turning into a petting zoo, folks. Hope you brought your feed. Ew. <laughs> um. Moo. Yeah, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to move like kind of like Daphne did, like move to the right. Flank right? Yeah. Sure. 
Are you trying to achieve anything? Get behind a pillar? Just stand sure, up. Or we can open? get behind a pillow. That's there fine. you go. You're behind a pillar 10 feet away from Daphne. Which means you're like, I think that means you're in their aura. Right? <laughs> it's 15. It's 15 feet away. Yeah, 15. The dog's 15 just like, foot mm-hmm. radius. Can't remember if it gives bonuses to people or not. Mm. Or if that's later on. You can read that while we're doing this. Um, Mr. Pockets, you're up next. You are at the heel of the frost giant who is just leaned up against a pillar after that guiding bolt he just took. Hell yeah. I'm going to cut him. Does that mean I get advantage if the guiding bolt is hit? Yes. Let's go. And if you get advantage on an attack roll. Actually, before I start, can I hex him? Yeah. Bonus action hex. Uh, You see Mr. Pockets' hand wave into the air. And the fingers contort into this symbol, uh, which he knows is the symbol of the Goblin King. And it burns into the chest of the ice giant uh, as he speaks goblin and says, Bow to our king. And he goes and immediately goes to stab into like the Achilles tendon of the. Ooh, okay. Uh, he has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. 19 plus 7. Yeah, that hits. Yeah. Whoopee! <laughs> 20 points of damage. 20 points of damage right to his Achilles. <laughs> Frost Giant is just taking a guiding bolt to the chest. You hex him. You strike him in the Achilles tendon. How do you want to end this? I had to add my hex damage, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I think I stab into his leg and I look at the fire giant and I point to him like you're next. Uh, and Val's got her arms out and she's in giant to the fire giant. Is this what we were sent to deal with? Ooh, fire the <laughs> that is Mr. Pocket's turn. Val is a Mr. Pocket's hype man. All right, so after Mr. Pockets is the, frost, is the fire giant cog, after seeing Mr. Pockets take out his gladiator brother, Crack, he's going to swing his greatsword at you twice. Is a dirty 30 hit? Does Silvery Barbs hit? Ooh, all right. <laughs> it is now a 23. Damn, I did my best. 66. That is going to be 28 points of slashing damage. Okay. Okay. And then he's going to swing again. Okay. Okay. 29 hit. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. There's 19 points of slashing damage. Okay. 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 <laughs> As Cog just brings down his greatsword twice on Mr. Pockets. Uh, Mr. Pockets, uh melts back into the head hole of the frost giant uh, going unconscious. Unconscious? Yes. Almost dead outright. (laughs) But unconscious. And that will end the fire giant's turn. Moving on to Ned. Ned. Um, Oh, so you're, you're at the base of this fire giant. I just look up at him. I'm gonna bite his ankle. (laughs) All uh, right, go in hit. for the bite. <laughs> That's a nine. It's a hit? Mm-hmm. It's going to miss. Does jumping away <laughs> provoke opportunity attack? It does. Okay. Unless the spell specifies otherwise. I'm just going to chill here. <laughs> All right. We're back at the top. Val. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go climb inside the head of this giant. <laughs> I'm going to go cast a Cure Wounds. Okay. Yeah, this Mr. is all still within melee range of the Fire Giant, so you're not going to provoke opportunity. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, just climb inside this nasty-ass cavern in this head <laughs> amongst the gore and viscera and brain a, a, matter. A, a, a flame tongue just burning just beside him as he... The flame tongue is burning the frost tongue. Just gargling. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead it smells and... smells like burnt tongue in here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and burn that third level spell slot and just cast it at third level. So it's going to be 3d8. (laughs) This is disgusting. This is disgusting. This is not what Val's used to. This is awful. That is going to be 18 points of heal. Hell yeah. 18 points of heals. 
You're both in the mouth of this uh, yeah. dead frost giant. I thought we were like inside the like the brain, the skull cavern. Like I think no, I thought we were like in the through, brain matter. Through the opening of the mouth. It's so just, it's like right there below the base of the back side of the skull. Yeah, this is disgusting. This is awful. <laughs> there, there is a little beam of light coming in yeah. as you're all just covered in gore and blood yeah. and um, tongue. Can I attempt to also drag him out? Make a strength check to see if you can He's pull yourself foot. and him out, out of the hole of this. Ooh, can I? Just, I'm going to use my bardic inspiration. I can just, that's how it works, right? I can just choose to use it. Cool. We're going to see if that helps any. Is a 16 do it? You're struggling, but you're able to like pull yourselves both out the, of the of the hole. Cool. Um, as you're both just kind of laying on top of the yeah. backside of the head of this yeah. giant. As Mr. Pockets is kind of coming to from the healing and seeing himself getting pulled out, and he's like, "Hey, hey, hey!" And he starts to kind of calm down. And he sees Val pulling him, and he's like. For a second, the disguised self comes up and he's in like his Mr. Pocket get up that he's normally like in his happy go lucky mode. He's like, Oh, well, you're my best friend. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're my best friend. Come on, up, and up, up, please. He starts getting please. pulled out. He starts <laughs> getting himself back to and then starts going feral. Yeah, it will be your full turn. Though. Yeah, pulling that's him cool. out. That's cool. I healed him. Oh, we're it. good. We're good. I'm, I'm, I'm Gucci on that. So Daphne, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can do this. Um, can I cast command? They only speak giant. Okay, well, how far are you from me? Y'all are probably about thirty. Yeah, thirty feet apart because you're on top of the frost giant, mm-hmm. which is thirty feet from her. We're just gonna cast guiding bolt again. Sure, go for it. Uh, fuck. Uh, seven plus seven is fourteen. Fourteen to hit. To yeah. Kill. Your head. 14 to kill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No, that was 7 plus 7. No, you still have my advantage. Oh, what does that do? Just roll it Shit. again. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> See if it's higher. Uh, probably won't be. 19. That hits. 12. Oh. Radiance. So you see as the uh, cog, he swings his great sword twice at uh, Mr. Pockets. And as he's catching his breath from that, a guiding bolt strikes him in the shoulder. And you see this uh, aura glowing off of him. Next attack has advantage. Next up is Gladiolus. You're still at the edge of the pillar, so you're a good 30-ish feet away. I'm going to get closer. <laughs> okay. You're getting all the way up in his, in his grill. <laughs> this hellhound just sprints across the arena, gets up in the face of What's this. What's great about being? A sorry, druid. gets up in the shin of this uh, fire giant. What's great about being a uh, wildfire druid? All my spells are fire related, and now I'm a fire dog fighting a fire giant because the frost one died. I was like, <laughs> we're a very fire fire forward crew. <laughs> I was like, but I- good for you. Maybe you guys can like bond or something. Buddy Row, um, yeah, no, so all I can do is bite it. Yeah. <laughs> Roll that attack. No. What was it? It was a nine. <laughs> advantage. Plus what? Oh, I have an advantage? With Guiding Bolt. Yeah. I have seven that time. So nine plus what? Five. So it'd be 14. 14. Yeah, My unfortunately, bad. you you miss with that bite. <laughs> I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this. Uh, or I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pockets, you're up. Okay. Hear me out. I'm hearing you out. Turn off the sword. <laughs> Turn off the sword. Yeah, because it does fire damage. That's not going to help me anywhere. I run up with flame tongue de extinguished. I was about to say de ignited. <laughs> extinguished. I run him through. I got people next to him. Let's go ahead and bonus action. Get that hex back up. Oh my god, I'm so fucking stupid. I've been rolling without the actual weapon damage. I'm a freaking freak of And now we know going forward. Bye. 25 plus 4 is 24 damage. Oof. None of that is fire. 
He 24. has disadvantage on dexterity saving. On which saving throw? Wee woo wee dexterity. Also, by the way, insane roll I just did. I rolled on three d sixes and a d eight. I rolled two d sixes on a six, one d eight on an eight, and the other one was a five. Damn! So that was almost the most I can do. <laughs> All right, you staying put? Uh, yeah, yeah. I had to use my bonus action hex, so that's where I'm at. All right. After Mister Pockets is the I'm fire so giant. Let's see, who's all around? We got Pockets, the Hellhound, Snake, and Val. The only one not up in his grill is this one. So he's going to make two great sword attacks, one at the Constrictor Snake and one at the Hellhound. (laughs) Get rid of the petting He's not an animal person. (laughs) Red flag. Not the ones trying to bite him. Which ones ones are you hitting first? Uh, Snake. Okay. Other... To 23. Yeah, that hits. I don't have my reaction back yet, do I? I'm going to keep burning out these silvery barbs. I have not used a single level one spell slot except for that. Have you used one this round? No. No. No, you haven't. So, yeah, you still have it. Can he re-roll that? Yeah. Well, well, what do you want? I was going to say, like, I am wild-shaped at the moment, so I'll just oh, that's come a fair back. Point. That's a fair I'll point. I'll just come back. Fair enough. Fair enough. You're just going to take it? Yeah, is it is it? What's the plus on the attack? Eleven. Okay, I come. I turn back into the fairy. Oh because no, that's, that's just for yeah, the attack roll. Oh, it carries over. Oh, it didn't. Okay. It's twenty-five points of damage. So you take the twenty-five. I get twenty. Yeah. And then the second attack is for the Hellhound. Great. Great, 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 great. I love that. So 22? Yeah, that, that Would you like me to also do the thing? Uh, well, you know, it's it's fine. It's fine. I, I'm a tough well, guy. We'll say this. He's second to last in initiative, so it's about to be your turn again. So this is like the last chance to yeah, run it. use it. There's a 13 hit. No! No, it does not! Uh, does this constitute me being able to activate Sentinel to attack him with an opportunity attack? He is not. He is not leaving your melee radius. But a part of Sentinel is use a reaction to attack an adjacent creature that attacks someone else. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do an attack roll with my sickle. Well, I'm going to roll Sick. this damage. Mm-hmm. Sick, dude. Oh wait, no. You, you died. Like, you hit me anyway. <laughs> Sick. Oh. It's another muscle spasm. So, so yeah, you watch as the sword is about to strike true, and all of a sudden it shifts slightly and lands right next to you. You want a dog get spooked during a storm? It's just a like, <laughs> <laughs> little piddle on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> I, so yeah, I float back up as my little fairy self, and I pull my sickle out, and I'm gonna swing at his uh belly button, right behind the knee. <laughs> all right. Does a 16 hit? It hits. Ooh, uh, three damage. Oh. Takes three sickle damage to the back of that knee. Yeah, because the sickle only does 1d4. Yeah. Plus, it's 1d4 plus two? No, that's not right. Is, is it dex or strength weapon? It's a dex weapon, right? It's not my character. I don't keep up with it. No, it's strength. So it's plus your strength mod. Yeah, but I get an extra modifier because it's a moon sickle, so that's where the plus two comes from. So it does three damage. I'm so dumb. Circle of the Moon Druid. He's definitely looking a little more attack. beat up than he uh, started with. All right. <laughs> so after him was Ned, you just got that reaction strike in. Now it's your full turn. Now it's my full turn. I'm going full. Which means you have your reaction back again already. He's mm-hmm. going full turn, boys. I got a full turn. He's going to do a full fucking turn. What's he going to do? Big snake again? Who knows? I thought everyone's going to turn into animals and make some weird Voltron thing. <laughs> I can't That's giant that. sized. I can't turn it. You're already animal. Shillelagh time. <laughs> Hell Here yeah. he goes, folks. Now it's time to hit. Um, so Your circle of the moon, right? Yeah. So you can bonus action, wild shape, and then action attack if you wanted to do that again. Action attack. I don't want no. to. I want to make this sickle hurt, damn it. Shillelagh. That's a 19 plus 8. That hits really hard. Well, okay, so now it's a... The hardness is determined by the second roll. So 
now it's a D8 plus... Let's see, my spellcasting modifier is Wisdom? Yeah, oh, Druids is Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it becomes... Wisdom mod plus your proficiency mod. Plus three... So it's actually D8 plus five. You know, it's, a, it's seven damage. Yeah. You watch as uh, the sickle becomes... Almost gets a clean sheen to it as it... Uh, the steel hardens and becomes sharper. For a moment, it looks like it almost grows in the size as he swings it. You got anything else? No, because that's bonus action action. We good. Val, you're up. I'm stabbing it with the rapier. Just running up to him and stabbing away? Ha-ha! Yeah, we... Go for it. Yeah, we're just gonna fucking stab it. Oh. Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna use my little bargain inspiration because it's a 16 plus... Still 21. Yeah, that hits. 21 hits. Cool. So then I get to roll my damage and my bardic inspiration. Beautiful. Oh, I love it here. I love it here. Um, so that is going to be, um, oh God, what is that number? There's going to be 14 points of piercing damage. Um, and I am back up to a, I'm now at a 22 AC until my next turn. He stumbles back from that attack a little bit, and he's he's looking worse for wear. I just call him a bitch and giant. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> bitch. Yes, you can. Let's see. He points his giant sword at you. That one cat thing. It's That's like, okay. Daphne, you're up. So I am going to cast... Cast the hell out of it. But Be gone! <laughs> Um, <laughs> go on, get a vodka scuboar. Give me that. We're gonna cast guiding a bolt. Scuba. It's a good spell. Casting gui a guiding bolt once more. Twenty-two. That hits. Cool. <laughs> Eight of uh, hit points, radiant damage. I mean, yeah. can I also as a? Um, I wanted to use a. Um, it's, a it's a bonus action of um, um, spiritual weapon. Mm. Guiding bolt is that a cantrip? Mm. So you can't cast two spells in one turn. Well then, we're gonna uh, we're gonna. I was gonna say yield because I don't know the word for it. Uh, to to the. I imagine that everybody's like in one like they're all right there up a, up in its grill. All right, well then I want to go the uh, I'm gonna veer I guess left, just away from everybody, but but not going. <laughs> I or, leave. <laughs> <laughs> I walk away. I'm trying mm -hmm. to I'm trying to get behind him, but not like going past everybody else because he's got y'all. I want to <laughs> go the you other. Hear one. the voice in your head of the traveler again. I am enjoying this uh, this odd tactic of yours it seems well, to be working i i can't deny that why is it odd i mean if doug did it it wouldn't be odd attack hide attack hide attack hide i mean you keep it a safe mm -hmm. distance it's working for you you know if it works it works that's i'm just here for the show my people are good at their attack so <laughs> i don't need to be in its grill but i'm glad that you're noticing i worked hard on it actually <laughs> All right, Hellhound. Bite it. <laughs> Bite away. <laughs> no. Oh, it's no. a crit fail. My bad. Although it's guiding bolt, right? You no, a crit. Yeah. You should get advantage, so the crit doesn't count. Sixteen. That hits. Roll some bite damage as you gnaw on this fire giant's ankle. <laughs> No. Ankle biter. Ah, ah. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. Mr. Parker, you're up next. I had advantage anyway. I don't know why I pretended like I didn't. Because we're all within five feet, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had advantage anyway. Pack tactics. Yep. I should have known. My bad. No, it's my um, fault. 1d8. <laughs> it's an astounding uh, four Whoa. by itself. Wow. Ankle biter. <laughs> That's the equivalent of a puppy biting you. You know, yeah. it's like, ooh, those teeth are sharp. But, like, <laughs> you're all right. <laughs> yeah, he does a little kick thing like, get off, get hey. off. <laughs> no, bad <my> booby. <laughs> all right, Mr. Pockets. Okay. Uh, using that opportunity with the bite, 
All right, go in to the side. Yeah, da, 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 da. I don't know why I rolled with advantage. Hold on. <laughs> flanking. Oh, you do. You went from. Flanking? I play flanking rules. Bet. All right. Um, I rolled them again. Sixteen. That hits. Yeah. One, two, two. As I rip into his. I do the exact same thing. I li- I rip into his ankle just like I did his cousin or whatever. Yeah, you watch him as he uh as he almost falls to one knee and he catches himself on his great sword. You can you can he see is. Mr. Pockets getting ready to also go through <laughs> his head. But he he is he looks nasty. Does that end your turn? Actually, I still have my bonus action. I call him a bitch. <laughs> That's my <laughs> turn. I call him a bitch and goblin. He spits some blood out of his mouth. I drink it. It's no. now his turn. <laughs> and he brings his great sword up, looking at Mr. Pockets once he, more. He can get me one. Here we go, folks. Daphne, you hear a voice. Now this is how you play with fire. And as the giant goes to swing down his great sword, the great sword stops in midair and his hands swing through the motion. And the sword pivots and comes straight down the back of the neck of the fire giant. And it looks like he misswung it and dropped it on himself. That a critical fail. (laughs) And you watch as this sword, not doesn't look like it just hits him, it pierces all the way through into the ground. The fire giant hits his knees and slides down the blade. Use my sentinel feature to react and hit him. (laughs) We did it! We did it! And then the crowd just goes completely quiet. And then I kicked him, sir. (laughs) And then you hear this, yeah! And then everybody just erupts in enormous, like, people losing money, people made a fuck ton of money. It's insane. The crowd is just going bonkers. And then you hear the announcer, we have our winners! Um, it's us. Um, it's us. We won. I'm looking for the exit. Val's running up. Confetti one of the, is ringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Val's running up one of like the down pillars and is doing like the whole like, like I am Spartacus like hand motion arms out. I'm turning like up no, the crowd. Dog. Right. The, the crowd is just chanting and hoorahing. The announcer says, uh, "The fall of Kraken Cog will bring about." A new challenge. But until then, good night, everyone. Hey, it's Tyler, your friendly neighborhood Ned man. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Legends in Training. We hope you're enjoying this fun little mini arc. It's a breath of fresh air to switch things up a bit now and then. We've got just a few more episodes of this before we return to Thistleheim, but first, we have to get back to Keyshire and see what's ravaging our home. If you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Legend for updates and more. We have some fun things in the works, and you'll get updates there much quicker than you will waiting on uploads. And of course, wherever you happen to be listening to this, be Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, rate, whatever you can do. Interacting with the podcast in any way helps push us in algorithms, and we so greatly appreciate it. If your hands are too slippery to do any of those things, maybe tell your friends, whether they're imaginary or not, to give this podcast a try. Word of mouth goes a long way. Stay tuned for episode three of The Ballad of Keyshire that goes live on April 19th. Until next time, we are Legends in Training. Quit touching my foot with your Move foot. your foot. My legs are longer than yours. Oh, I don't have any issue with Zach. Then go That's that way. A, I keep my feet under my butt. You do not need to keep doing that. <laughs> then move your feet. You move your feet. You move your feet. You move your We're feet. not doing this. <laughs>